Okay, Steve Colescott here for EliteFTS.com. We're with the uh, group of athletes sponsored by Fusion Bodybuilding uh, discussing training today. And our first question is, who are your early coaches or people that motivated you to train? We'll start right up here. Early coaches, man. I think I just watched a lot of television and read a lot of magazines, and I, I started training with Branch Warren uh, in probably 95 or 96, and he and I were training partners for about seven or eight years. So I worked alongside Ronnie Coleman and Ulysses A. Harris and Jay Moore and all the guys at Metroflex Gym uh, there in Arlington. So I got a lot of great coaching from some of the greatest athletes that are still on stage today. Great athletes. That's a tough one to top. <laughs> um, I guess my, my first real trainer would have been uh, Dan Dufresne, uh, IFPB pro from Canada. And uh, he just taught me a lot about the fundamentals with bodybuilding, um, you know, meal planning, uh, measuring my food and whatnot. So I learned a lot from him in my first couple shows. Um, well, I did a bunch of competitions on my own, actually, at first. And I was quite successful until I took a little bit of a downward spiral and realized maybe I should have some help with this. So my first official trainer was um, IFBB Pro Fuad Abiyad from Canada. And uh, he taught me a lot, the importance of an off season. And then uh, that really sparked, hit home with me because I never really took the off season at that point in my career seriously. And uh, it's basically you grow in the off season and you cut down for a competition, so uh, he's definitely one who inspired me. Okay, Mark? Uh, for the first few years, just all my knowledge was just gained by reading. Um, lots of books, magazines, whatever I could get my hands on. Uh, my first real trainer was Mike Francois. Um, hmm. The biggest thing about Mike was is that uh, he just taught you that you're only going to be in the gym 40, 45 minutes, and it, might, it was only four days a week that we would train. And for those 40 or 45 minutes, it was just complete insanity. I mean, you know, it's just the intensity level of training. Um, that's the one thing that I took away from Mike. Julie? Um, well, I think, I mean, I got advice from girls here and there when I was looking to do my first show, but um, there just wasn't, I guess, a, a lot of good advice out there. I, I mean, I had done a lot of research online, so that's pretty much the diet that I follow going into my shows. Um, but that's probably one of the reasons that Craig and I established contestprep.com, because um, you know, there must be a better way to help athletes prepare for competition. So that's, you know, not really anyone notable, but one of the reasons that we sort of specialize in helping people out going forward. Okay. Uh, I, I think when I, when I first started, as far as information, I just went to the bigger guys in the gym. And uh, then eventually I was the biggest guy in the gym. So I changed gyms. <laughs> and uh, pretty much that's been my technique ever since. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, I get a lot of stuff off the internet, and uh, anytime I, I get a chance to talk to anybody about bodybuilding, I learn. So whether they're a top IFBB pro or somebody who's maybe only been doing it for a year, uh, I, I've found valuable information from anyone. So there's no specific, just I'll take any information I can get. Okay. Jody? Um, I get a lot of my motivation from, uh, I do, um, uh, sorry, just watching uh, YouTube and I'd look up just like fitness routines and whatnot and that's how I got involved with fitness and my first coach was Mindy O'Brien uh, who was a top Canadian IFBB fitness pro and she was with me until I got my pro card and uh, currently I'm now working with uh, Mike Davies. That's okay. it. Uh, could you guys tell me a little bit, kind of briefly, about the evolution of your training program? What type of training have you done? Did you follow different ty types of programs? Uh, and, and what has that evolved to? Mm, I've actually followed, I've done most of my own training completely. I just kind of do what I enjoy. Um, I do like the bodybuilding type of training the best, but I'll always involve gymnastics and plyometrics, a lot of interval training. So I keep it very athletic, but then uh, the specific times it's very bodybuilding okay. and it's been like that since the start really okay um i've tried lots of different things but uh it, it always just comes down to bread and butter bodybuilding exercises large compound motions and then kind of going into uh, uh more isolation motions so uh you know i've tried you know dc training i've done german volume training like and at the end of the day, I always go back to doing the same thing, and I, I seem comfortable with it, and uh, so I just keep it simple. So. And, and what, how would you describe that? Is it kind of a middle of the road? Yeah, you know, like, you know, I might do four or five exercises per body part, and, uh, 
you know, I keep my sets reps like, you know, three, four sets and 10 to 12 reps. You know, I don't really go much above or below that. So, okay. Um, yeah, I stick to like pretty standard bodybuilding exercises. And um, definitely that was more my style when I was shaping my physique. Um, when I did fitness, um, I had a lot more plyometrics in, in my training to help me prepare for the routine round. Um, and now that I'm pretty happy with like proportions, I just focus a little bit more on supersetting problem areas to keep them, you know, tighter. Okay. Um, like Craig said, I've tried a lot of stuff in the past, um, and the basics definitely work the best. Um, currently, I, for the last year, I've done John Meadows Mountain Dog style training, and um, it's very basic exercises. Um, just with you know a little bit of a twist so you're never doing the exact same workouts twice um, but very basic exercises for the most part and um, that seems to work the best for me okay. I tend to do um, I guess more lower volume type training I mean I'm in the gym for maybe about an hour um, sticking to the basic exercises um, but the key for me I feel is I never do the same workout twice so um, I might be doing the same exercises but in a different order or choosing different exercises, just trying to keep it fresh. Okay. Um, I guess I've done a lot of the different training out there, high intensity, um, uh, high volume, and like Marika, I've been working with John since uh, July, so doing the mountain dog training style, and you know, to be honest, I enjoy it the best. It just, um, and, and I think it, it helps, you know, anytime you change up whatever training program you're using, um, your body has to have some kind of adaptation to it. And the, the nice thing about um, this program, like like Mark said, it's uh, it switches up every week, so there's no real stagnation with it, I found. Good answers, everybody. Uh, I tend to stick with the same thing that I've done for the last 20 years or so, and I like changing it up every now and then, but training with Branch Warren and doing some of the Doreen Yates High Intensity and Mincer programs, uh, for the last 20 years, it's still working, you know, 250, mid-40s, still benching 400, pulling 600 off the ground. I mean, if it's not broke, I don't want to fix it. So high intensity is what I follow. Okay. Um, <clears throat> looking back over, over your training, what weak points have you, have you had that you've overcome or weak points that you're currently working on, and what are you doing to kind of address those? Uh, shoulders have always been <coughs> my strength. So with the injuries that I've incurred year after year after year with the problems that I've had from the accident, I've always had to overcome the, the weaknesses that have come from the injuries. So, I mean, I think I have to continually work on my shoulders. I mean, the older I get, the smaller they get, so the harder I have to work to make them bigger. And are there certain things you have to avoid? Uh, I, I've never behind the neck press. Is that the question you're asking? Yeah. Exercises? Yeah, I'd stay away from behind the neck presses and I really don't do a full range of motion with any kind of shoulder press anymore just because I'm not able to. Okay, pretty common. <clears throat> um, I guess my weak point starting off is probably my legs and uh, that turned into my strong point over probably the last 10 or 12 years. Um, weak points I still have. Uh, my midsection had, has grown from you know, trying to eat as much as I can. So uh, I got a hernia surgery a little bit ago that, that helped to bring it down and just keep my weight down in the off season so often try to bring my arms up as well. So. Uh, like Santana, I turned a weak body part into a strong one so I really didn't have much of a back and I ended up splitting my back workout into thickness and width exercises so I'd be training twice a week and for about a year I, I made some good improvements on and most people would say now my back's probably one of my better body parts. Okay. Um, definitely what I need to focus um, more so on is uh, is my legs just to try to get <coughs> a deeper or sorry a larger sweep because my upper body seems to um, overpower my lower body even at this point okay for your back did you do any particular techniques to help bring it along um, it was high high intensity uh, basic exercise a lot of deadlifts a lot of uh, a lot of rowing, rowing type movements um, when I was doing the thickness workouts that really worked well for me and uh, just basic exercise for with a lot of lap pull downs, straight arm pull downs, that sort of thing, chin ups, um, that, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, for me, my back was weak as well. Um, so far this off season, uh, I've been training it twice a week, which definitely helps, like Mark said. Um, currently, um, a struggle for me is my legs. Uh, my legs were always a strong point. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, I had a quad tear that I suffered during massage therapy session. 
um, and I've developed quite a bit of tendonitis due to that quad tear. So um, specific leg exercises are definitely a challenge for me. Um, you know, there's the great thing about bodybuilding though is, is that there's not necessarily like a specific exercise that you have to do. It's not like powerlifting where you have to do squats. Um, so, you know, there's, there's ways around it, you know, and if the squats are painful, for instance, with me, um, you know, I can get by doing squats with chains, which, you know, helps accommodate the resistance some and take a little bit of pressure off the knees, for instance. So um, that's a struggle for me right now. Okay. Um, I think like a lot of women, I had a weaker upper body when I started training, um, but prepping for um, the fitness portion of, um, of my competition with gymnastics and everything helped build that up. And then um, I definitely carried more um, weight in my lower body, like glute hamstring area. So by working on that all the time, I think I'm constantly training glutes in the gym now. So it's one of my stronger body parts now. Um, I always had a, uh, a weak chest. You know, I could bench press the moon, but uh, it just didn't show in the chest. Um, so I've changed up some of my exercises, do a lot more uh, like negatives and whatnot. Um, just finding ways I can actually stress the muscle uh, without using ridiculous amounts of weights that seem to put more stress on my joints than the actual muscle itself. So I've brought it up a little bit in the last couple of years and I'll hopefully I'll continue to. Okay. Yeah. And definitely overcoming different um, weaknesses throughout the years of competing. Uh, currently it's definitely my legs are a lot smaller and don't quite match the size of my upper body, so I'm trying to grow the, those. From the gymnastics background? Um, I guess, or when I first started weight training, I <laughs> did ignore my legs completely. <laughs> like, I just hated it. So that's probably the main thing. But, yeah, so it's definitely trying to build my legs now. Or, like, say in the past, my biggest obstacle was trying to maintain a decent weight. Like, my rebound post-contest was always pretty bad. Like, 25, 30 pounds on my frame was too much. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> by a show of hands, uh, which of you change your training as a as a contest approaches? None of you. Okay. So, uh, why why um, Santana? Why do you train consistently up um, to a show? Yeah, I don't. I don't really believe in the whole adage of you know higher reps will tone the muscle or anything like that. I don't think that. Um, I think that's kind of bro science that doesn't hold true. Um, so I don't think there's any need to change. Uh, you know, maybe at about the two or three week out point, I might not try to attack um, crazy heavy weights because my joints are going to become a little more susceptible. There's not a lot of fat um, around the uh, around the joints or anything. But other than that, my training style stays pretty similar. Okay. Do you, do you do any adjustments other than dietary for a show? Just amounts of cardio. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Duration. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you do cardio wise. Is uh, well, in my off season, I try to do like t you know 20 minutes to an hour. I try to do cardio every day, you know, on and off season. Um, but before a show, I'll do um, some like sprint interval training, or like right now, I'm doing an hour and a half of cardio just to make sure I lean out early. So. Okay. And and what do you do cardio wise? Um, off season, maybe four times a week or so, um, maybe 30, 40 minutes. And then in season, it, it totally depends on where I'm at. But uh, for the most part, I like just intervals, let it either sprints or stairs or gymnastics, but interval training usually for sure. Okay, our last question on training is, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have, have beginners and younger people coming up to you for advice. What is the most common mistake training-wise that you see? Jody? Most common mistake? Um, not hiring a coach. <laughs> I've definitely been in that situation. I've went into shows for a few years without a coach, and I did okay, but um, definitely not having that eye to make sure you're on the right track is the biggest mistake, for sure. Okay. Um, I, like, just like just gym people, like non-competitors, um, honestly, just form, you know. Most, most guys lift, you know, heavier than they should, and just as most females lift maybe a little lighter than they should. And uh, unfortunately, with the guys, they have to sacrifice for them, and uh, they're probably not getting as much done as they think they are, but they'll learn real quick. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same thing, like for women just not lifting heavy enough in the gym. Um, I think they're too worried that they're going to get too bulky if they, if they train too heavy, um, but you know, you got to challenge your body in order for it to change. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing that uh, with beginners is a lot of times they just think that it's going to happen overnight. Um, you know, this is definitely, you know, a marathon, not a sprint, you know, so we need to be very consistent with it, and it's not going to happen tomorrow. Okay. 
Um, I'd say, going along with Craig, a lot of young kids don't check their ego at the door. They'd rather bench 315 and it look, you know, maybe go like quarter of the way down. But they bench 315 in their eyes, really not activating any muscle fibers or tissue. So a lot of people I see starting out, they lift way too heavy um, and they're not recruiting, you know, the muscle fibers or feeling the contraction that they need in order to grow. Okay. Um, I guess a lot of kids I see, they try to emulate, um, you know, what a pro or somebody who's been training 15, 20 years would do for a program um, when there's really no need for them to be even trying that. And they get too sore, they get discouraged. And uh, so, yeah, trying to do too much too soon. Okay. I agree with every one of their answers, along with I don't think kids train hard enough when they go into the gym and they think that they got their swole or their pump or they've got blood flowing. That's, that's not what it's about. It's about tearing the muscle fibers down and recovering. I just don't think that the kids are training hard enough than you guys. Okay. Thanks, guys.